hello so every week every video i kind of have a rough idea of what i'm filming and what i'm gonna do for the week but i am in a very weird headspace because it's been a very strange october for a lot of us in reflecting on my video last week i just thought i have so much privilege i get to live in new york city and i've built up my home and you know all the things i have in my home i cherish every single thing and I just am very grateful for the privilege that I have in all of it. So every day to make the most of it because I have been getting a little bit in the spiral of I'm not making the most of it and so I feel really guilty and I feel bad about myself and so then it makes it worse because then I can't actually go and do any of the things to like, it's, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle. But um, we're going to do that this week because I love October, it's my favorite month and I haven't really been able to enjoy it the way I wanted to but that's just the way that it things turned out to be and that's okay it's the last week of october so let us do some october -y things um today i'm gonna go see colors of the flower moon which is not a very october -y thing and it'll probably be a very sad and traumatizing thing colors of the flower moon is a movie uh martin scorsese leonardo dicaprio Lily Gladstone, it's a Native American story of Native American land in Oklahoma in the early 1900s, like 1910s and 20s. There was an oil rush there and the Native Americans owned the land. Wow, surprise, shocker. And they became one of the richest Native American peoples ever. But of course, white greed. So it's the very tragic story of how 23, I think it is. Is it 23 or is it that it was in 1923 that it happened? somewhere around did i say this was the osage people were murdered for their money for their oil titles oil land titles so that's what this story is about and it's one that is not very commonly known and so i'm looking forward to seeing the movie as hard it, as it might be to watch and i'm sure that i will cry because i'm also pmsing so it'll make it doubly worse um but it's important to witness these stories and remember them because this is a story that has been virtually lost like most people don't know about this story i didn't know about it before so yeah uh, and recently um if you saw my productive vlog i was talking about how i'm continuing and re-establishing my self-guided research and research on what i did for my college thesis and taking in more of a historical direction and honestly this is stuff I should have done for my thesis, but I loved to procrastinate. So anyways, this is what I'm currently reading, Colonialism and Resistance in Belize. And it's really fun so far. <laughs> like I obviously learned the history of Belize in school, but this is more dense version and breaks down the things that I learned because in school it was really like, la la la, the masters and the slaves coexisted and fought off the spaniards together but it's like there were still slaves at the end of the day like did they really have a choice so so yeah i'm reading about that and doing research and i was mentioning it to my friend alana <laughs> and i was like oh yeah i'm reading this she's like oh my god it's so dense right and i was like what i'm having a great time <laughs> but yeah so that's also what i'm doing and i'll probably continue doing this week i also want to get a pumpkin so i'll probably try and get one after i watch the movie today i don't really actually know where the grocery store probably has but the last time i went to the grocery store they had really slim pickings for pumpkins i feel like everywhere in the city recently it's very slim pickings and the farmer's market on sunday it was like 12 dollars for a pumpkin but i saw somewhere else that it was eight dollars for a pumpkin so i was like i'll just go get the eight dollar pumpkin but now i don't even remember where the eight dollar pumpkin was but i gotta carve my pumpkin because i'm not gone a year without carving pumpkin in a while and i also feel like i'm pretty late this year like i would have already had it done this time last year i've also been saving a bunch of movies for like the right time in october and it just hasn't come so when i carve my pumpkin i will watch adam's family because that is my favorite halloween movie adam's family values perfect halloween movie so that's the plan so far um as for reading i have not really been reading anything i've not been in the mood for anything i really want to read something october appropriate but i just don't know i i like can't get into anything um so we'll figure that out later i guess but for now i'm gonna go see colors of the flower moon and hopefully find a pumpkin go to post office first oh okay 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 mm -hmm. uh
actually really hate coming to the movies because it gives me a lot of anxiety and I hate leaving Rocky for so long because like I can watch a movie at home. <sighs> My life is so hard. So before I go to bed, I just wanted to give some of my thoughts on Killers of the Flower Moon. And I think that I expected to be more stirred up by it, more like angered. You know, these are, are traumatic things that happen to native peoples. And, you know, it's something that lives within your body. It's like your, it's your ancestral trauma. When you hear these stories and when you see it depicted, in a movie specifically i don't know i almost felt resigned in a way because it just felt like yeah this would happen to us and i say us as i'm native to the americas but not the united states i'm native to more south it's still something that happened to us pretty collectively in just just in different ways but i just kind of felt resigned in the way that like yeah this seems about right it didn't feel shocking to me and I wonder if that's just because I've become so desensitized now. Like for the past few years, I've gone through a lot of growth and learning and it's been hard and it's been difficult. Learning about the things themselves that happen to indigenous peoples in the Americas, but also realizing how those things were kept from me as I was growing up and how everything around me was kind of working to assimilate me into Western European society and cut the construct of that in, in the United States of America. I don't know. I found it interesting and I think that people unfamiliar with this history would benefit from watching it. I got a call but I wanted to say that that's not to say that I wasn't emotionally moved by this story but I just think that I expected to to feel a lot more, to feel a lot more enraged. I feel just a little bit more like yeah this is our reality. I cried within the first minute. It, the first scene is so, and I, I had seen something talking about uh, in an interview, somebody was talking about the pipe and the beginning. It's, it happened at the beginning, so not really a spoiler, but they bury this pipe and it's kind of a symbol of like, now we put away our native ways in order to appease the white men so they don't hurt us but they, they'll do it anyways it holds so much within that scene something specifically that like really hit me hurt me was like a mention of how our like our children won't know our language they'll have to go learn a new language now after this moment and that's so sad because that's my story like i don't know my own language you know <sighs> 
and I I wasn't taught it because in order for me to better assimilate it's so depressing it's a long movie but I encourage you to watch it and to learn and to witness these stories because it is so important you might think it's like really long in the past it is what built our present and it's <sighs> anyways i think it was well done also lily gladstone's performance was phenomenal like she's so wonderful to watch her <sighs> hopefully tomorrow um i will move on to things that are a bit lighter just because i need to at this point I just wanted to do a quick little explanation of what I'm doing because I'm not Mexican and I don't participate in Mexican culture but for the past couple years um whenever I watch stuff about friendas and things and cry over dog friendas literally bawl my eyes out on every single video I see of them anyways I've just been like I wish that I had something like that to have a space to remember People that have passed not just people specifically my dog Cadle, who was my childhood dog and when he passed like my sister and i really didn't process it because it happened in the beginning of covid so um we never got like proper closure and i still feel like i haven't but at the same time like his passing really marked the end of my childhood and you know everything that was there anyways and so i just wanted a space to like honor him also two of my family members have passed since last october so i just wanted a space for that and so i asked my granny who is not mexican where mopa and maya she said that back in the village back in the day they used to do something similar um, but over time it kind of got lost and i was not brought up with the tradition and so i decided to kind of make my own little ofrenda in a way and then i sent a picture to my dad and he was like oh yeah Baba used to do that. Baba being my Ukrainian great-grandmother. So, you know what? Guess my ancestors were just telling me to do it. So, I am missing one 
person on this because I don't really have a picture of them and I really need to go dig for one, which I'll do, I swear, I promise I'll do it eventually, but for now, this is who is here. Anyways, happy Halloween! <laughs>